Now, the French president, Francois Hollande, has praised the courage and determination of the soldiers guarding the Louvre Museum in Paris after one of them shot and wounded a man armed with a machete. Mr Hollande said that they had prevented what would undoubtedly have proven to be a terror attack. Well, authorities say that they believe the suspect is an Egyptian who came to Paris on a tourist visa only eight days ago. A French prosecutor said the 29-year-old suspect was thought to have travelled to Paris from Dubai. Olivier Guita is the managing director of Global Strat, which is an international security and geopolitical risk consultancy firm. And earlier, you told me that there were some striking characteristics to this attack. A couple of things are important to underline. It's it's the first time in in recent history that we've seen an attack in uh, in France or Western Europe um, from a, a non-homegrown uh, terrorist, a, a tourist just coming on a tourist visa, just to carry out an attack, and that's very very disconcerting and troubling, and it makes it even more difficult for security services. Um, to find those people, uh, that's one. The, the second thing is that France is at the, the top of the list of most jihadists in the world, because for someone living in Dubai, uh, an Egyptian national to decide and clamor this on Twitter that he was going to Paris after uh, mentioning that he was uh, a supporter of Islamic State uh, is really mind boggling for me at this point that he didn't decide to attack targets in, in Dubai, for instance, uh, which has been clearly designated by Islamic State uh, as, a, uh, as a potential target. Uh, so th- that's the main, uh, I would say, the, the main draw from, from what we've seen today. Uh, the, the second aspect is obviously that, as you mentioned, it will trigger a reaction down of more... Uh, negative publicity for French tourism, and uh, as uh, as could be seen already by the numbers of of uh, visitors in the Louvre that went down twenty percent from ten to eight million last year, uh, mostly uh, for tourism reasons. Uh, I'm afraid that uh, tourism in France will uh, still suffer from that, and that's exactly what Islamic State is after. Were you surprised at the speed at which the authorities declared this to be a terrorist incident? What was the what was the basis of that conclusion? Uh, obvi- obviously, I think that uh, what they had uh, recognized quickly is that uh, he had tried uh, to perpetrate an attack when when he, he was told to uh, that he couldn't get in with his uh, with his uh, rucksacks uh, he decided to uh, to take a machete and go after the soldier so probably the plot was much larger than just you know going after a soldier uh, that that's one the second thing is uh, Obviously, the authorities had more information than uh, we had and quickly had his uh, cell phone, his mobile phone, where they they found a lot of information. So I suspect that it was from there uh, that they could come to the conclusion that it was terror-related because if they've seen his social media right there, they could see it because obviously... Uh, we, we've seen that he was very active on social media, uh, clamouring his support for Islamic State. Many of us who have been in France over the last year or two will know that there there is a heavy military presence. Not a heavy military presence, but there's certainly a military presence at public places right across the country since the uh, country has been the target of many or, or several terrorist attacks um, in recent times. What do you make of the response, though, of the soldiers? Because we we thought, didn't we, after the Nice attack, after the Paris attacks, that they were there to reassure the public, but they clearly are on a, a, a very high alert footing in the way that they responded to this attack. Uh, very much so. I mean, you, you are totally right. I mean, France is the... The, the most well-protected country in the West. I mean, 10,000 soldiers are patrolling the streets 
uh, and in in main monuments you, you see a lot of the army rather than the police. Uh, but one thing that is important to uh, to underline is the the fact that they reacted very quickly uh, and very professionally to to the attack. And uh, unfortunately, uh, they are on a higher alert even than at the end of last year because of the run-up to the French election. I mean, jihadists have made no secret that they would love to influence uh, the vote the way that it happened uh, in Spain in 2004 after the Madrid attacks. Uh, that Al-Qaeda was responsible for and that changed uh, the course of the election. So the authorities and the, the, the army and the, the security services are on a high uh, security footing now all the way until April when the first round of presidential elections are, are going to take place. Are you convinced that they prevented what could have been a much, much more deadly attack? Yes, I mean they they didn't find anything that could have you know be being a bomb or uh, automatic guns, but you know it could have gone into a into a crowd of uh, of tourists and uh, and uh, stabbed them. So yes, uh, that that was a a very lucky occurrence that they they were there when uh, uh, when he came in. Egypt um, and even Dubai. Neither country is on the United States banned list. Um, you will know that. Should they be? A, a lot of the countries sh should be on the ban list if you're thinking about uh, the issue of terrorism. And uh, actually, if you look at it, France, Belgium should be even more than other countries that are not on the list. Because if you look at the amount of potential terrorists that, that, that France is, is looking at today, we're talking about 15,000 potential jihadists that the French have to monitor. And those guys have French passports. So they can go tomorrow to the U.S. with the visa waiver program without being vetted. So when you start opening up the, this kind of worms, uh, literally, there, there are many nations uh, that should be banned if there's no vetting. And I think that uh, with this occurrence, uh, there will be also in Europe talk about looking at vetting even tourists, because if there would have been, a, you know, even a, um, a simple investigation of the social media of this guy, you know, uh, I, I'm sure that he would have been uh, forbidden to enter France. So there will be repercussions when it comes to also uh, immigration and even uh, tourism from, from some countries in, in Europe. This coming, as you said, just before the French elections, does it play into the narrative of any particular candidate? Who who is likely to benefit, if if that's the right phrase, from an attack like this? Very much so. Unfortunately, the far right and Marine Le Pen. I mean, she she'll uh, she'll be uh, she'll be jumping on that uh, and say that she's the only one that can really have a strong policy against terrorism, uh, especially now uh, because the other candidate on the right that could have been seen as strong on terrorism, François Fillon, uh, is embroiled, uh, as you may know, in a, in a major scandal and his polling numbers have gone down the drain very quickly and, and, and Marine Le Pen has, uh, has gone up. So. Uh, and that's the idea for the jihadists. They would love nothing else than to have Marine Le Pen as president. You, you've talked about the impact on tourism. For, for those who may or may not wish to go to France, is, is it a safer place now? Does this, you know, this might, this incident might be put down to a stroke of good luck that it didn't end up being deadly. Is that what the tourists will have to rely on going to France? Or can we say that France, this is proof that France is safe, Paris is safe? The problem at this point is really, uh, as I said at the beginning, the, the amount of potential jihadists uh, that are either French, French residents or now people from the outside that want to strike at France. And, and, and that's the main issue that that I see as very problematic. Uh, at this point, 
the security services are doing the best they can. Uh, they cannot put more than you know the 10,000 soldiers they have already on the ground. Uh, they would need major intel. Uh, but in this case of the Louvre attack, I mean, you know, the Egyptians, the UAE, uh, should or could or missed to have informed France of, of the possibility of this guy being an extremist. Uh, but that's unfortunately the, the kind of uh, risk that you will have to take, knowing that they're doing the best they can, uh, but it's still, as of today, the main target for jihadists around the world. That's Olivier Gitter, who's the managing director of Global Strat, an international security and geopolitical risk consultant.